Hello and welcome to Inside the Huddle, our weekly chat about all things NFL. And uh, yeah, we are still at home, still got plenty to talk about, though, because it's been another big week in the NFL. Lots of headlines uh, from both sides of the Atlantic. So helping me break it down when you've got two guests as good looking as these men, you've got to get them on camera. Our two time Super Bowl winning head coach, Rob Ryan, and my regular partner, Jeff Reinbold. Lots to talk about, fellas. Good to see you. Hope you're both doing well. Jeff, let's just start with this news. Obviously, no international games to be played in 2020. We had four due to be played in London, one in Mexico, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, those are gone for this year. Your initial thoughts? Well, I, I was disappointed, Neil, like everybody, but you know, you got to understand these are uncertain times. These are crazy times that we're all living in right now, and the NFL's got to do what's best for the players and safety for everybody. And if that means taking a year off from London, I think it's a blip on the radar screen. I'm not overly concerned about it because you know the NFL is deeply, deeply committed to the market, particularly in the UK, but the international market in general. Rob, just looking at reactions from from media, from fans on social media, this doesn't seem to have surprised anyone, sadly. Uh, this is just the kind of uncertain world we're living in right now. Were you surprised or did you expect this? No, I kind of expected it because of, you know, like you guys have just said, this this uh, pandemic is really affecting so many things and and travel all the way internationally makes sense that that they would postpone it. But I'm really disappointed for all the fans in the UK. Uh, they sell out in a minute, you know, for those stadiums. They, they really got a great growing fan base. And I know it's disappointing to the league and all those players that were going to play overseas probably for the first time uh, would really look forward to such a trip because uh, it's such a wonderful place. But uh, I know football will be back uh, the next year and it'll continue to grow until they have their own team. All right, good stuff. Let's have a look at what the league said uh, then in terms of their statement. Uh, this was released when the news came out from uh, Chris Halpin, the NFL Executive Vice President, Chief Strategy and Growth Officer for uh, the league. He said, after considerable analysis, we believe the decision to play all our games domestically this season is the right one for our players, our club and all our fans in the US, Mexico and the UK. We greatly appreciate the support of our governmental and stadium partners in Mexico and the UK who all agree with this decision. And we look forward to returning for games in both countries in the 2021 season. Fellas, I think it's worth picking up on something you you both kind of alluded to there in, in your initial answers. And I was quite strong on this on Twitter as well, because there was a few people saying, oh, well, you know, is this a chance for the NFL to get out of town? Why would they want a chance to get out of town? They wouldn't. I just... I, you know, I'm absolutely convinced they come back as strong as ever with four games in 2021. I would put my uh, mortgage on it right now. Jeff, this is not going away, is it? No. I, I You know, Neil, let's, let's be honest. What's the NFL more than anything else? It's a business, and they're in the business of expansion. They want a global footprint. That's business in, you know, in, the, in the century that we're in. And so the... This has been a huge success uh, in the UK, and I'm talking about the UK here. This has been an incredible success. Rob talked about the fans. You know, they sell the thing out. The, the games are second only to the Super Bowl in the turn in the amount of hype and and uh, the experience that that the fans get. So I think that the NFL recognizes that there is a incredible fan base in England, and until, as Rob said, until there's a until there's a team there, I think we're going to continue to. Get you know, four games a year, and then eventually we'll have a team in London. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it affects any any of the future of what's going on here. Rob, you obviously, when you first come and experience this, you were really taken aback by the fans to the point now where you're you know you come into the come into it and you know a few years back and you're not sure what to expect to where you are now where you're saying they're going to get a team. So it's obviously had a big impact on on yourself. Oh yeah, I mean, especially when you see it firsthand. I mean, it's uh, it's impressive, and, and uh, Jeff touched on it. Uh, you know, obviously the Super Bowl has all that, and we we've, we've covered the Super Bowls together for two years. I know you guys have been doing it forever, and uh, and there's so much around that. But other than that, those international games, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it, it's an awesome venue. It's awesome uh, uh, crowd participation. And uh, look, I coach for the Raiders and the Black Hole and all that, but I've never seen the support 
that the NFL in general has uh, than in the UK. I mean, it's awesome. I, I love it. I was uh, I, I was so impressed with it and uh, still to this day am. And I know that losing those couple games, uh, you know, hurt quite a bit. And uh, but I know it'll be even back uh, bigger and stronger in the, in the future. Jeff, in the press release that came from NFL UK, I thought was it they they actually pointed out that they remain firmly committed to the UK. They're actually going to look to try and use this season to strengthen ties uh, with flag football, with the NFL Academy, and with TV partners. So this is, I think, where things are different from maybe when it was the American Bowl days of the late 80s. If something like this had happened then, there was no foundation then. There's a foundation now, and that's good to hear those kind of commitments are still there. Yeah, you know, you, when you've got a team, Jacksonville's got an office on the ground in London, and they've got they've got grassroots going growing all over the United Kingdom. Uh, Neil, you know, uh, go to any of these games, and I remember the first one that I had the privilege to cover. I got tears in my eyes because it's it's such an incredible difference from what we experienced, you know, in in uh, White Hart Lane when when it was the original <laughs> London Monarchs, and you could count the number of people in the stands when you were watching the game. <laughs> the fans are so knowledgeable and. It, it's, I mean, you, I don't care who you're talking about. Talking Emmanuel Sanders, Josh Norman, Thomas Morstead, whatever player, NFL, Mike Lervin, anybody who's come over to, to the UK has been shocked by the knowledge of the fans, the intensity of the fans, the level of passion that they have for their teams. And so all of that is not lost on the NFL. And I think it'd be good in a way, Neil, for the fans in the UK to recognize that maybe we'll take a step back and realize how fortunate we are to have games in the UK. Yeah, that's a very good point, Jeff. I think uh, when you haven't got something, you really miss it, right? So, um, oh, Rob, just to, obviously the international games have fallen foul of the coronavirus, uh, but the teams are plowing ahead with their preparations. As a coach who was, well, many years in the NFL, but even last year with the Washington Redskins, how hard is it to to teach a playbook, to, to get a team up to speed? Now all these off-season workouts have begun virtually how, how hard is that for coaches well i'll tell you what it's uh it's strange but true i actually had to do that uh my first year when i went to dallas uh we knew a strike was going to happen and uh so jerry jones you know or somebody looks exactly like him said rob why don't you just get the defense together and uh uh we'll put all this together and you just start you know, putting in the defense. I'm like, well, can we do that? He goes, oh, yeah, we can do it. So we did it all February for the whole month. Uh, I met with those guys five days a week, and we went through everything, put the whole defense in. And uh, so I actually had a little experience doing it. Um, did it help? At least it introduced, you know, what you were going to do, and they had some, con you know, some concepts. They understood kind of, you know, what they were getting into. But uh, – it's not an impossibility. Uh, and I know Jeff could tell you this, those first couple weeks in the OTAs where you're not allowed to line anybody up in front of each other, the coaches are the ones that you line up and hit. So I know some coaches are really happy that this thing's going on because my chest get wore out by, I mean, years hitting those big linebackers and uh, they don't know how to slow down, but uh uh, so that part of it was always kind of weird anyway. Stage one, you never saw the players. Stage two is when you, your coaches got pummeled. You know, so, uh, you know, from that aspect, I don't think there's going to be, uh, you know, the teaching part of your install won't be different. It's just obviously going out and uh, practicing, uh, which you do in stage three against, you know, mm. the offense a little bit, and seven on seven type of stuff. You're going to miss that. But uh, the teaching initially, you're going to have cut ups. You, you can uh, teach off a of film. You'll be able to do that. Uh, it's obviously not as good, you know, not having your players there with you uh, to put your hands on them, to, you know, to see how they react with their teammates, you know, together. Because that's where you really grow the team in the offseason. Mm -hmm. Usually that last day of OTAs is some team event. You go paintballing or something like that. Just get guys closer and closer together. Uh, you know, you'll miss that. But uh, I think I think even if they have a shortened training camp, I think it's still going to be a great product like it always is. 
All right. Yes, the teams are preparing then for the 2020 season. And now we have a schedule to get our teeth into. We've got something to look forward to. Uh, and we'll break all that down after this short break on Inside the Huddle. 